the Johnson Wax Program. The makers of Johnson's Wax and Johnson's Self-Polishing Glow Coat present Fibber McGee and Molly, Incident Number 258, written by Don Quinn, with music by the King's Men and Billy Mills Orchestra. The show opens with The World is in My Arms. Have you ever stopped to think how many labor-saving devices you modern women have in your homes compared with the homes of 50 years ago? How would you like to give up your telephone, your washing machine, vacuum cleaner, electric refrigerator, or food mixer, just to mention a few? Well, I know the answer. And I know something else you wouldn't like to give up. That labor-saving floor polish, Johnson's self-polishing glow coat. Think of having to go back to old-fashioned scrubbing again to keep your linoleum floors clean. Yes, housekeeping certainly has been made more pleasant with Glow Coat to save you work every month and to make your linoleum wear longer, too. Women who aren't now using Johnson's Glow Coat in their homes are missing a lot because Glow Coat requires no rubbing or buffing. You simply apply and let dry. In 20 minutes, your floor is sparkling and gleaming with a beautiful, long-lasting polish. If you have any friends who don't know Johnson's self-polishing Glow Coat, You'll be doing them a favor to mention it to them. You know, there's nothing like a handyman about the house, is there? Oh, is there? Well, well, Fibber would be a handier man if he could keep track of his screwdriver. He thinks it's in his tool chest. So he brought the tool chest up into the living room, which is no place for a tool chest. And here, emptying things out of the tool chest, we find Fibber McGee and Molly. For goodness sakes, McGee, what have you got there? A tool chest. You heard what the man said. (laughs) Well, did you bring that up out of the basement just to look for a screwdriver? Yep. Too dark in the cellar. The light socket's busted. Why don't you fix it? Can't find my screwdriver. Well, use the blade of your jackknife. I can't. The point's busted off. How'd you do that? Using it as a screwdriver. (laughs) Now, let's see. Bicycle sprocket. Auto crank. Wood burning outfit. What's that book there under the broken alarm clock? This? Well, that's Helpful Hints on Home Handicraft by Henry Horace Epplewhite. <laughs> it's great stuff, too. Yeah. Is that where you got the information about how to fix my sewing machine? Yeah, how does it work now? Oh, fine. Except that the bobbin keeps coming loose and shoots across the room. Oh. <laughs> I nearly got Mrs. Uppington the other day. <laughs> She was sitting down at the time, too. (laughs) Which wasn't very sporting of me. (laughs) Umbrella handle. Bear trap. Let that bear trap lay there, Molly. We might catch Gildersleeve in it. (laughs) Oh, hey. Here's that old shotgun I was going to fix the trigger spring on. Oh. Oh. Come to think of it, I did fix that trigger spring. Now, isn't that nice? Now you can fix that hole in the ceiling, too. Mm -hmm. Or make it a little bigger and install a brass pole, then we'd have a nice guest room for visiting firemen. You wouldn't be getting sarcastic, would you? No. And incidentally, what do you want the screwdriver for? No, I'm going to fix something, Molly, and I don't want to tell you. I want to surprise you. Who's that? Uh oh. It's Mrs. Uppington. The front bumper of the station wagon set. The queen of Wistful Vista society, and wouldn't you love to crown? Come in. Oh, 
how do you do, Mrs. Uppington? Oh, how do you do, Mrs. McGee? And Mr. McGee? Hi, Uppy. I, uh, I just stepped into... Oh, what have I stepped into? <laughs> well, uh, you stepped into an old camera, Mrs. Uppington. But don't feel badly about it. He never used it anyway. Oh, I was going to fix that camera when I got time. What was the matter with it? Well, when you looked into that ground glass plate, everything was upside down. Oh. I got so dad ratted tired of standing on my head to take pictures that oh, I just... Oh, really? My, how awkward. Yeah. <laughs> oh, no, he rather enjoyed it, Mrs. Uppington. He was always a bit of a pixie with a brownie. <laughs> Oh, uh, well, you simply must allow me to pay for the damage. I insist on making the loss good. Oh, well. Why? It was no good and it's no loss. Why, Molly? How can you be so mean to Mrs. Uppington? You want her, you want her to have this thing on her conscientious? You want her to go through life with the guilty feeling that she's broke up a man's hobby with them big clumsy feet of hers? McGee! <laughs> And don't worry about paying for the camera, Mrs. Uppington. Oh, I wouldn't insult Mr. McGee by offering him money. Huh? Oh. oh. No, 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 no. It's just that I feel so badly about interfering with your artistic pursuit. Oh, sure. So I shall send you over a little box of watercolors that I have had ever since I was a slip of a girl. Uh, well, I must be going now. Look so... out! Look, Look out for that, that bear trap! Ah. Oh. Uh, are you hurt, Mrs. Uppington? <laughs> Why should she be? She ain't caught in it. I am. <laughs> oh, I'm so sorry, Mr. McGee. <laughs> oh, you are not. Oh, Mary. And I do hope the watercolors will make up for the loss of your camera. <laughs> Remember the old poem which I just made up? <laughs> little spots of color, little lines of ink. You may think you're an artist, but confidentially... <clears throat> well, Goodbye. <laughs> Oh, I do, do I? <laughs> hey, Molly, open this dad ratted bear trap, will you? Well, how? Well, take a screwdriver. Oh, my screwdriver. gosh, no screwdriver. Hey, wait, I can do it. Oh, ah. yeah. Boy, is that a relief. Well, how on earth did you get it open, dear? Oh, just use a little logic and common sense. I says to myself, now keep cool, me. Sure, I says. Now, what kind of a trap is this? Well, says I, it's a bear trap. Yes. Of course, I says. So what's the logical way to open a bear trap? Why, shucks, it says, with your bare hands. Oh. So, oh. <laughs> oh, dear. Well, I'm glad it wasn't a mouse trap. You'd have had to give yourself a Mickey. <laughs> <laughs> now, hurry up and get that junk off of my floor. Well, Molly, I haven't found a screwdriver yet. I don't want to Well, stick... for goodness sakes, run down to the hardware store and buy a screwdriver. I don't got time to... Hello, Johnny! Hello, daughter! Going to the auto show? Oh, I don't think so. Not this year, Mr. Oldtimer. Why not, daughter? Well, I'll tell you, old-timer, they took all the fun out of it. You used to go to auto shows so you could stand on the running boards and watch the salesman show you how easy the clutch and the gear shift work. And now, no gear shift, no clutches, no running boards. All they got left is the salesman. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty good, Johnny. If a trifle exaggerated. But that ain't the way I heard it. <laughs> Well, I hear it. One feller says to t'other feller, Say, he says, I see where Fibber McGee and Molly are back on the air. You hear their first two shows? Yep, says t'other feller. Sure are in the groove, ain't they? That's an understatement, says the first feller. That ain't a groove. That's a rut. <laughs> Sorry, ain't going to the auto show. Guess I'll take my gal. She's a streamlined cutie with seal beam headlights and a choice of paint jobs. And knee action. <whistles> so long, kids. <laughs> Happy
Uh, yes, sir. Was there something for you? Oh, hi, bud. I want a screwdriver with a black handle. We're in the hardware store now, folks. I rattle some hardware, bud. Thanks. How about a screwdriver? With a black handle. Why a black handle? Well, why not? That's what I say. Get one with a black handle. Uh, yes, madam. A screwdriver with a black handle. Uh, what size? What do you mean, what size? You got to be fitted for them? <laughs> Well, we have itty-bitty baby ones for taking watches apart, and mama-sized ones for stabbing beer cans open, and great bit papa ones for wheel what work. <laughs> Look, Goldilocks. I'm a medium-sized guy looking for a medium-sized screwdriver for a medium-sized job. Uh, just step this way, please. Uh, mind the wheelbarrow. Oh, 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 lead me past it, Molly. I, I don't want to look. Why not? It's only a common wheelbarrow. Oh, you know, Molly. My cousin Chamberlain. What? You remember what happened to him when he was working on Boulder Dam? No, I don't. Well, they found somebody had tampered with the concrete mixture. Don't tell me they suspected your cousin. Yes. The minute they seen his feet sticking out of the dam, they knew he was mixed up in it. <laughs> Him and another guy. <laughs> that must have been the foreman. The poor lad told us he was getting in solid with the boss. <laughs> you can open your eyes now, dearie. We'll okay. pass the wheelbarrow. Thanks. Okay, bud, where's the screwdrivers? And make it snappy, because I want to hurry back. Hey, hardware man, come over to my house right away. What's the matter, Mr. Flanagan? Every time I try to sail my toy boats in the sink, it overflows. Well, why don't you use the bathtub? What? And get the coal all wet? Hurry, will you? <laughs> Screwdriver, bud. Remember? Oh, yes, yes. I'll get it right now. Hey, get a load of the old guy coming in with a beard and the bifocals, Molly. He looks kind of familiar to me. Well, he acts kind of familiar, too. He just winked at me. The dear old thing. Oh. Oh, he did, eh? Hey, look here, you with the jaw grass. <laughs> Who do you think you're winking to? Take it easy, Fibber. Heavenly date, Harlow Wilcox. What you doing in a false broccoli, <laughs> Harlow? Hey, Harlow, are you... Shh, shh, shh. I'm making a survey. <laughs> oh, uh, Mr. Hardware Man. Oh, yes, God. sir? Uh, my granddaughter sent me in for some floor wax. What's the best kind? Uh, well, we always recommend Johnson's, the finest polish you can buy for floors, furniture, and woodwork. You don't say. Oh, yes, we do. <laughs> Gives a beautiful, lasting polish and protects all wood surfaces from scratches and stains. Uh, wait a minute, now I'll get to it. Mm, that's quite a disguise, Mr. Wilcox. Gee, thanks, Molly. I modeled it after Mr. Chips, you know, in the movie. Is it okay, Fibber? Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you look like a well-dunked donut. <laughs> <laughs> that's the worst disguise I there ever... There you are, sir. Johnson's Wax. Not only the best protection for your floors and woodwork... But it will add a great deal of beauty to your home. Thanks, Johnny. I'll tell my granddaughter what you said about Johnson's wax. And I'll be back after a bit. Certainly. Any time, Mr. Wilcox. What? <laughs> you sold me this wax, remember? Oh, gee whiz, I never thought of that. <laughs> Now then, uh, was there something for you, sir? A screwdriver. Remember me, bud? The fellow that wanted to buy a screwdriver with a black handle? Oh, yes, yes. Now, here's a wonderful screwdriver, 12-inch shaft, patented grip, non-skid tip, and transparent handle. He wants one with a black handle. But, madam, the transparent handles don't come in black. Dad, rat it, bud, who wants a transparent handle? All I want is a simple black handle. To... Hello there, Skipper. You got a good, strong, comfortable broom? Why, yes, we have, madam. Here's one, 75 cents special today. I'll take where shall I have the broom sent, madam? Don't send it, Sniffles. I'm buying it for Halloween and I'm riding it home. <laughs> Let's start, everybody. Here I go. Giddy up, sweet steak. Woo-hoo! <laughs> I, I beg your pardon, sir. Have you been waited on? <laughs> have I? Have I been waited? Look, bud. 
For ten minutes, I've been trying to get you to sell me a screwdriver. Oh, yes, 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 yes. Uh, here you are. I think this is the type of screwdriver you want, isn't it? That's it, bud. How much? Uh, two seventy-nine. Heavenly days, two seventy-nine. Oh, now, don't go into a tool spin, bud. <laughs> that screwdriver ain't worth no two seventy-nine. Why, well, I could get one across the street at the five and dime for twenty cents. Then why don't you? Well, they're all out of them. Well, when we're all out of them, we sell them for a nickel. Good day. <laughs> Uh, Come on, McGee. Maybe we can find one. Oh, there. Good day, my dear. Oh, hello, Mr. Boomer. A horrible Halloween to you, Paul Spades. Allow me to introduce my little nephew, Cedric Boomer. Cedric, take your hand out of the gentleman's pocket and say hello. <laughs> say hello to Mr. and Mrs. McGee. If you insist, Neon Moles. Hello, Molly Dolly. Greetings to you, stupid man. Ah. <laughs> little Sir Echo, how do you do? <laughs> Hey, is that a real revolver he's playing with? Oh, heavenly days. Do you permit him to have such dangerous toys, Mr. Boomer? Certainly, certainly. Spare the rod and spoil the child, I always say. <laughs> Put the heater away, Cedric, before I kick your teeth down your little pink upper glottis. You lay a knuckle on me, Boomtown, and you'll wind up in a forest lawn mud pack. <laughs> well said, Cedric. Spirited lad, isn't he? Yes, indeed. Well, I'm sorry we can't stop for a little more conversation, Mr. Boomer, but we have to go home and hunt for a screwdriver. These people want two seventy nine for one. Two seventy nine? Why, that's an outrage. I'll sell you one for only thirty seven cents, myself. Shortcake. <laughs> Always carry a few tools with me for one reason and another. <laughs> thirty seven cents, eh? Okay, Boomer, it's a deal. Let's see it. Of course, of course. Now let me see. Screwdriver, screwdriver. Where I put that screwdriver? <laughs> Here's a letter from the draft board asking me to report in the morning. Hmm, dated October 15th, 1917. <laughs> yes, indeed. I should have dropped in some time ago. Postcard from Jefferson City Mo. Poor old Mo. You should have seen the police report they had on him. Reading time, 20 minutes. Doing time, 20 years. <laughs> Glass eye with a sentimental gleam. Ah, what's this in my hip pocket? A small grimy hand with arm attached. Oh, it's you, Cedric, my lad. <laughs> Trying to follow in your uncle's fingerprints, eh? Perhaps you know what became of the above-mentioned screwdriver. Of course, of course. Let me see. Screwdriver, screwdriver. Where did I put that screwdriver? <laughs> Here's a water bubble gum that had a blowout. <laughs> I must remember to have it vulcanized. Boy Scout knife? What am I carrying that for? I wouldn't knife a Boy Scout. <laughs> the butt of a chocolate cigar. License plate off a hot tricycle. <laughs> and a check for a short root bear. <laughs> <laughs> but come, Uncle Horatio, you said we were going to meet the mob and case a couple of joints for a hike. <laughs> oh, yes, I forgot. Tonight is bank night. <laughs> good day, my dear, and good day to you, fish fry. <laughs> the King's Men sing Sawing a Woman in Half. <laughs> When I was a youngster of seven or eight I worshipped a hero, a man truly great I'd stare open-eyed at this wonderful man As he took his place on the stage and began Sawing a woman in half I'd shiver and shake and I'd laugh uh, He'd show us a lady, I'm not telling fibs a lady who had no regard for her ribs He'd saw the poor girl into fractions And then the orchestra played Until we meet again What a whale of a trick, boy Did I get a kick out of sawing a woman Right through the middle, the saw quickly goes. Until it had parted her head from her toes. 
news. The crowd got excited when she was divided. They stared and they strained every muscle. They said it was magic, but I thought it tragic to sever her hat from her bustle. And I don't mean maybe if I was that baby, I'd raise up a flock of objections. The axe spoils her chance for a lovely romance. Who'd marry a lady in sections? Sawing a woman in two was never the right thing to do. In decent society, there should be a law to keep him from tickling her ribs with a saw. To settle the question, I asked for a date. And when she said yes, I hardly could wait. I was nervous, you bet, to see which half I'd get. When he saw that woman in Goodness sakes, McGee, will you hurry up and find that screwdriver and get this junk out of my living room? Oh, I'm only halfway through this tool chest, Molly, and I'm finding more stuff. Did you see... What do you want that screwdriver for, anyway? Oh, I can't tell you, Molly. It's going to be a surprise. <laughs> I'm going to do something for you that you've been wanting me to fix for a long, long time. Come in. Hi, mister. Oh, hello there, little girl. Hello. What you doing? What you? Well, I'm looking for something. What? A screwdriver. Where? In this tool chest. Why? Because... Oh, listen, quiz kid. <laughs> don't bother me with all this driver. I'm trying to find a screw drivel. I mean... Don't... Hey, you, you get... got a lot of dandy stuff in here, I bet you. Well... Oh, looky, a new baseball bat. Where'd you buy it? Hmm. Uh, I didn't buy it. it. It was a gift. Who from? From a man I bought a suit of clothes from last week. And stop bothering me. <laughs> Trying to locate a screwdriver in this big suit. Okay. Hey, what's in this bottle, mister? Hmm? Medicine? Now, put that back, sis. That's just some lotion I used on my arm the time I got tattooed. Hmm. Okay. Did you get tattooed, mister? Oh, let's see it. Hmm. No, no, no. Uh, I don't want it. It didn't turn out good. Oh. Come on, mister, please. Let me see your tattoo. Well, okay. If you don't tell anybody about it. Wait till I roll up my sleeve. There. Mm -hmm. See? See, that's a dandy tattoo, I bet you. Oh, I don't think it's very good. Who's it supposed to be, hmm? J.P. Morgan. Why? Well, the guy that tattooed me was a little deaf, that's why. I told him I wanted to anchor, and he thought I says a banker. Along, hey, because... mister. Now what? My daddy wants to know if you're going to join the poker game at the club tonight. You tell your daddy I'll be there. And tell your mother that if your daddy comes home smelling like energy, it's because McGee took him to the cleaners. Hmm? <laughs> 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 huh? <laughs> I says tell your old man I'm going to take him for his role. I bet you won't, I bet you. Huh? He says you're an awful bum poker player. Oh, he does, does he? Yes, he does, does he? <laughs> he said you always played a full house like you were afraid it was haunted. Well, so long, mister. Fresh kid. She can cause more trouble than a bee in a coupe. Now, let's see. If I don't get... Oh, Molly, look. Here's that motorcycle engine I've been saving. Uh, what are you saving that for? Why, Molly. Now, how many guys do you know that could reach in their tool chest and bring up a motorcycle engine if somebody wanted a motorcycle engine all of a sudden? Well, I could count them on the fingers of a Boston glove, dearie, if that makes you happy. But for goodness sake, no, get I'm that... Gonna... Oh, hello, oh. McGee. Hello, Mrs. McGee. Hello, Mr. Gildersleeve. Hi, Gildersleeve. Sit down and make yourself at home. Or no, don't. <laughs> I've seen how you act at home. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't he a card, Mrs. McGee? Ah, oh, he's a card, all right. And to think that I drew him. <laughs> I'm sure tossing ringers. <laughs> what is all this stuff, McGee? You mean the stuff in this tool chest? Well, I was looking McGee, for... McGee, if you're thinking of starting a junkyard here, I'll complain to the authorities. This is a residential zone. Well, is it any of your business? Yes, it's my business. Well, what's your business doing in a residential zone? Dude! <laughs> 
stop this bickering the both of you. He's just looking for a screwdriver, Mr. Gildersleeve. Well, I'll help him look for it. What does it look like, McGee? Oh, it's about this long with a black handle, and it's got TPG carved on the handle. TPG, eh? Uh, you know what that stands for. Well, I always thought it meant to take a powerful grip. But it maybe... stands for Throckmorton P. Gildersleeve. That's what it stands for. <laughs> That's my screwdriver! Oh, dear. Now, look, boys, there's no use fighting anymore. I just remembered where I saw that screwdriver. What? You did? Where? On the shelf in the hall closet. But be careful. I- I'll get it, Mrs. McGee. You stay where you darn are, Gildersleeve. <laughs> I'll get it. After all, this is my house. After all, it's my screwdriver. Okay, okay, okay. You can have your old screwdriver. I'll go get it. I'll go with you. I don't trust you out of my sight. You're so short-sighted, I could still get away with plenty. Where'd you say, Molly? On the shelf in this closet? Yes, but be careful, dearie, because that shelf is loose and it's... Yeah, I know. I'll get out of my way, Gildersleeve, while I get that... Oh. 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 about that loose shelf. I know you did, but I had to get that screwdriver. What did you want the screwdriver for? I wanted it to fix that shelf. (laughs) Bibber and Molly will be back in just a moment. I want to make sure that everybody knows about Johnson's Wax Enamel, the sensational new kind of enamel that has wax mixed right in it. So please listen carefully for half a minute. Wax enamel is different from any enamel you've ever used before because it contains wax. It dries with a finish that is remarkably smooth and satiny, a soft luster so much more beautiful than the harsh glare you often get with ordinary enamel. So for the same reason, a wax enamel finish is harder to scratch or mar and easier to clean. And wax enamel is easy to use. You brush it on like any other enamel. One coat almost always covers and a little goes a long way making wax enamel economical. Your hardware or paint dealer or department store is now showing this newest Johnson product in its many stunning colors. Selected by a prominent interior decorator, you'll find just the color you want for enameling your bookcase, breakfast set, or bathroom walls. Make a point this week to ask your dealer about Johnson's Wax Enamel, the new kind of enamel that contains wax and dries with a smooth, satiny finish. Thank you. Good night. Good night, all. This is Harlow Wilcox reminding you that when you buy any one of the Johnson Wax products, you get your full money's worth in satisfaction. Be sure to ask your dealer for Johnson's self-polishing glow coat for your linoleum, Johnson's wax for your floors, furniture, and woodwork, and Johnson's car new for your car. All these superior products are manufactured by S.C. Johnson & Son, Incorporated.